so well for time, I think we're going to be finishing. I'm not going to talk that long either, I have to say. Just drop some pauses in. <laughs> this, okay, this is fantastic. This good, doesn't it? Because this is going even better. She worked quite well with all this. Sorry, it's not the best reproduction of this image by Bert Stern. Oh, it's what, what was it? This is. Sorry, did you see it? I'm Dallas Sites. There you go. I know. Your turn it starts now, Dallas. My parents call me Dallas because they didn't think I was going to get fucking beat up enough <laughs> growing up <laughs> in a small town. But anyways, so. So this is an image by Bert Stern, who uh, was the last photographer to take photographs of Marilyn Monroe before she died. Six weeks, these, six weeks before she died, these were taken. I'm gonna, maybe I start also with this quote by Bruno Latour, uh, because we're coming to the end of the day, and I thought it was fitting because we've seen so many interesting images. And, um, so, connecting images to images playing with series of them, repeating them, reproducing them, distorting them slightly. This has been common practice in art ever since, e even before the infamous age of mechanical reproduction. The intertextuality is one of the ways in which the cascading of images is discernible in the artistic domain. The thick and tangled connection that each image has with all other images that have been produced, the, the complex relationship of kidnapping, illusion, destruction, distance, quotation, parody, and struggle. Even the simplest connection is so important for a, de for a definition of the avant-garde that once a type of image had been devised, it is no longer possible for others to produce it in the same fashion. And I think that's also interesting about these bird stirrings. So if you don't know the history of these bird stirrings, these were ones that she crossed out. So then I've written this thing for today. When I saw this image, I was t 10. These came out in 1982, so I was 10 years old. I was deeply hurt by them, on top of the fact that my grandfather was obsessed with Marilyn Monroe. But then I started to find out possibly why he was obsessed with Marilyn Monroe. His wife, my grandmother, had the largest doll collection. Your like, hoarder is like right up my street. <laughs> 4,000 dolls. <laughs> Insane. In Canada, yeah. Private collection in Canada. So, as a boy, I dreamed that secretly Arthur Miller, the playwright, and Marilyn Monroe were my parents. <laughs> and I still slightly believe that through some type of, <laughs> not that big of a time shift, but through some type of time travel, <laughs> that I am the illegitimate son of Arthur Miller and Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> so when I saw these images, they did upset me because these images were of my mother, who I thought of as Norma. And I thought my mom looked so beautiful. Yet she had crossed these images out. She, for some reason, didn't like these images. So then we started to see these strange layers of Marilyn Monroe. And this might be the best wall <laughs> to be showing these images. So you've got this veil. This was for Vogue magazine, which at the time would have been very racy that she was, but there was enough of this screen of her holding up this chiffon scarf that my dad, Arthur, gave her. <laughs> and that was enough, she felt, to cover up her nudity. And I was going to do this talk with my shirt off, but because mom had her shirt off. But it's bloody cold in here, my nipples could cut, <laughs> cut glass. But she had this chiffon. And in some of, if you get the book, The Last Sitting, so there's this interesting thing that he called it The Last Sitting. And I started thinking of The Last Supper. 
and Mary Magdalene, and of course we all know the sort of histories and, and uh, you know, the various kind of interpretations of Marilyn Monroe and, and her personality, was she really super smart? I believe she was. She was studying with Lee Strasberg. She was married to Arthur Miller, who was an incredible playwright. I can't really think that Dad would have married her if she didn't have a brain in her head. And so, but anyways, so in the book, The Last Sitting by Bert Stern, there's some outtakes where she's dropped the scarf and done this. And there's, uh, to me, something very interesting about those images as well, that when she had that, she was fine. But as soon as she dropped this, then she covered up. So then I was thinking about this screen and that she was on the screen. So you've got these so many layers now to this image, and even better now that it's on this wall, that we've got this crumbling thing. And that she obviously stood behind this. In, in a better image, you can see a scar. She'd had an operation. Um, and so you've got these layers. And then she went through and crossed these out. And Bert Stern wasn't supposed to print these. But 20 years after her death, he put out this book. So I liked this weird thing that for some reason, which even though this is such a beautiful picture of her, something in this image she didn't like. And so she crossed them out on the contact sheets and then he reprinted them. And I thought that there was also this weird sort of because it was six weeks before she died, this almost prediction of kind of death through this kind of religious sort of cross. And I will finish by saying that I do believe that she is my mother. And the reason that I really know that she is is because that red cross is not there when I arrived. <laughs> That's my <point. laughs>